video off so we can delay on the bandwidth or help with the bandwidth. Last day of class is Tuesday 4-21. Your last day of class which is Monday, Wednesday, Friday is Monday 420. We will probably be done before then, unless y'all want to stretch it out. Um, I'm going to cover these two, these four sections, and I'll leave a couple of days. We'll go over the final. We'll go over that last test. I'll have one more day for questions. But if that falls on the last day of class, that's great. And if it doesn't, then we're done. I don't know. I haven't even looked at the calendar. I think we got like four more meetings. I think or something like that. Or so yeah, four about four. Um, so it might work out good. As you can tell, your final exam starts. Let me see who that was that wants to Skype me in because that was a text. Uh, we're going to talk about the project also. Miss Webb Greenley, yes. They said we can do away with the project. I got that word last week. I just forgot to tell y'all. Yes. <laughs> so yes. I knew, I kind of figured that's what was going to happen, but I wasn't sure. So thank you, Miss Webb. Let's write that down. No project. Thank you the Lord. Well, you know, I told y'all it was stupid anyway, didn't I? It wasn't my idea. <laughs> no project. That was the, the poster board people. The people that loves the poster boards and stuff, that was their idea. Okay? So, no project. Forget the project. Thank you, Miss Greenley. You can, you can undo your microphone or you can type with the lower left-hand corner down here and type in a question if you've got one. If you want to use the uh, there. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Oh, your mic isn't working. Okay. All right. Final exam starts, as you can see, on 421. And it will last until 428. You have two attempts. Takes the higher of the two. I can't remember how many is on it, but I usually I either do 25, 33, or 40. Um, I don't go. I don't vary off of that. Uh, I usually try to stay around those three. I usually try to stay around 33, but I don't know. You'll have to look at it and see. I don't know how many questions are on it. And if we have time after class day, I can look at it and see. And you have two hours to take the test. Okay? So that's the final exam. The last, the last test, which is Unit 4, will cover 2A... 2B, 3A, and 3B. And that's what I usually cover with this test. So I'm not doing anything different. Okay? I usually don't cover the other sections because really, if you want to know the truth about it, they're worthless. Um, <clears throat> that test, you can actually, it, it starts today. I think I put this morning at 8 o'clock. And you can go it, go, it ends on the last day of class. Ends on 421. Okay? Now, during, on the last day of class in the week of finals, last day of class up to the 428, I will be tweaking, I don't know how you spell tweaking, I will be tweaking 
The great book. T-W. Is it? T-W-E-E-K. E-E-K. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I will be tweaking the grade book, meaning I will be taking out anything. I've already done it with this class because I went in before class and I took out all the stuff that, that you didn't have to do. And I will be doing the last thing, which is assigning zeros. Assigning zeros will affect your grade. Um, what is that? Well, if you didn't do, let's say Miss Jeter, she's not here. Let's say Miss Jeter didn't do 4E. Then she's going to get a zero for 4E. Homework. If she didn't do the unit one test and she had three tries and she didn't do it, she gets a zero. We all stop it. I got cats fighting. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> um, I got one cat that just don't get along with any of them. Um, she's a witch. Anyway, uh, so remember this, assigning zeros, that will happen this last, during finals week. I will go in and I will assign zero. So if you see your grade change a couple of tenths of a point or something like that, that's why. But I think I've already done that for your class. 103, I think I've already done that. I did it right before class. Not not the zeros, but the tweaking. I made sure that the weights were right. So your exam and your test are 80% and your homework is 20%. And I do, my, my uh, grade is 80, is, let's see, 79.45 and above is a B. 69.45 and above is a C. 69.45 and above is a D. So, you see what I'm saying? I give y'all 0.45. So, bonus questions on each test. You get to redo the final exam. You got two attempts on the final exam, and you got three attempts on the last test to improve your grade. And I give y'all 0.45 on the grade. I don't, I don't leave it at 0.5. So, if you don't get the grade you want, that's not my fault. So, please do not you know, please do not email me or text me asking me to do this and do that because I'm not. I'm not going to reply. You've had three. You've got three avenues to improve your grade. Well, what about this is last? Is it? Well, then you better depend on that final exam, doing it twice, and you need to try to do that last test three times and try to get a hundred on both. Okay, because I don't know if you took advantage of the three. Of uh, three chances on unit one, unit two, unit three. If you did take all three attempts, then you did good. But you need to exercise this and, you know, do the best you can because I'm not going to go back. It's not fair to, you know, one person to go back and do this test when I didn't do it for the whole class. All right. So, does anybody have any questions about the last week of class? Nope. <laughs> okay, well, I'll leave that on there for a couple more seconds so people will stare at it. I think we've done it for about three minutes now, three or four minutes. That's been on the that's been on the screen for about three or four minutes. So hopefully, for the one or two people that's going to watch the videos, they'll see that. And I'm going to go over this again. I'm going to go over it uh, Monday, probably, because I'm going to leave this over here so I can I won't have to write it all down again. All right, so let's move over to the slides, and let me get up here and go to the slides. And you're going to see that this chapter two and chapter three is not that big a deal. Okay, uh, chapter uh, chapter two, I think this is two. It deals with uh, unit conversions. And I'm not going to units. There we go. Use presenter view, I think. There we go. 
All right, now we're talking about unit conversions. Unit analysis is the same thing as unit conversions. So I don't care if you call it unit analysis or unit conversion. Some people call it dimensional analysis. Okay, really, technically, dimensional analysis is when you go from standard to metric or metric to standard. That's dimensional analysis. But some people, you know, tomato, tomato, potato, potato, unit analysis, unit conversions, dimensional analysis, whatever you want to call it, it's the same thing. You're mixing units, okay? And we are buying 30 acres of farmland at 12, good God Almighty, 12,000. That's some expensive farmland. That's that old subdivision land right there, 12,000 per acre. You are buying 30 acres of farmland at $12,000 per acre. What is the total cost? Now, this is pretty simple, but a lot of people say, we just multiply 30 times 12. Well, you got to do it with the unit conversions. You're buying 30 acres, so that would be, hold on, let me get my, let me get my dew jigger up. There we go. You got 30 acres of farmland, and you don't have any units, so I'm going to put that over one. Now, with unit conversion, you want to set up your units to cancel. And that means diagonal. And I don't know diagonally. I don't know if it's got two L's. I don't know. Y'all see that's right. Okay. I don't think that L's that A is right. That A is not right. Diagonal. That's supposed to be an O, isn't it? Y'all check that for me. All right. So remember, diagonally, it can be this way. Yeah, it's supposed to be an O. I thought so. Just didn't look right. All right, so I've got to put acres down here. Well, they said $12,000 per acre. $12,000 per acre, one acre. And, of course, I'm supposed to put that in front. I'm going back and forth. So y'all just bear with me. There we go. So what happens to your acres? The acres are diagonally because you're multiplying. So they and that is called unit conversions. So in I, I think in chapter two, this two A and two B, I think you're going to be doing a lot of unit conversions. And that, and that leaves you with 30 over 1 times 12,000 over 1. And what's the only unit left? Dollars. And, of course, that's a, that's a, that's a lot of money. That's 360,000, isn't it? Yes, sir. Now, why am I making fun of that? Because not many smart people would pay $12,000 for farmland. Usually farmland is bottom land or land that can't be used for anything else. And usually you get you do good if you get 8,000 an acre. So I'm just telling you, 12,000, I don't think I'd, I don't think I'd buy it for farmland. I might buy it and uh, subdivide it and put houses on it and make a little money off of it. But I don't think I'd buy it for farmland. Unless you live in in around around down in Belt Honey Path, around in Pores, where they got all the money. All right. Yeah. Question. <laughs> so that's a unit conversion. Now, if I just went out here and did okay, thirty five to twelve thousand, that's not a unit conversion. This is a unit conversion because you're canceling out the units. A lot of you nursing people, you do this it's called dimensional analysis. All right. So let's see what else is on the agenda for the unit conversions. And the acres will cancel and you get $360,000. OK. 
Okay, here's some key words. Okay, per always has a division symbol. Per hour, miles over hour, feet over second. So whenever you see that per or you, you know, miles per hour or feet per second, you know that that's also going to be a, and y'all know I can write on this thing. I didn't know that. I wish I could put text on it too, but it, I don't know if it'll let me. Let's see what this, no. I can't put text on it, but I can, I can write. Ooh, I didn't know I could do that either. Uh, I also tell students, let me do a pen. I also tell students, you always start with a fraction. And if you don't have units, always start a problem over one. Okay, that problem I just did with y'all, 30 acres didn't have a unit. It had one unit. It didn't have acres per whatever. So I started with 30 acres over one. And I always tell students, if you don't have a miles per hour or a feet per second, always start with your number that doesn't have a per. Always start with your number over one. Always. And you'll see that when I start these problems, you'll see me, if it doesn't have a miles per hour or feet per second, or a kilowatt hours per day or you know anything like that then I'm gonna start it with that number over one and that helps you start the cancellation process because it's diagonal cancellation process is diagonal okay square that that is area you might want to put area beside that like a painting a wall how much square footage of paint do you need because that's how paint is measured by the square foot so that's when you see something squared that is usually meaning square feet which is area or square units square millimeters square miles square you know feet that is area cube or cubic is volume for like a swimming pool a swimming pool would be cubic feet, meaning that it holds 2,000 cubic feet of water. Okay? So you might want to take a, take a note of these words because you might see them a little bit. Question, right, complaint. Okay, how many crates do you need to hold 2,000 apples if one crate holds 40 apples. So the first thing I would do, well, I'm trying to get, there we go, move that over. One crate holds 40 apples. So you can say 40 apples to one crate if you wanted to. So I would go 40 apples. over one crate. And then it says, how many crates do you need to hold 200 apples? Well, I need to do this another way. I need to do one crate. One crate is 40 apples. There we go. And 2,000 apples equals how many crates? Now, in this case, you can use X right here. No, that's not right. That wouldn't be right. You can't do this. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm thinking out loud. Because the, the, here you would just divide 40 into 2,000. So I'm trying to get the crates. To, yeah, the crates would cancel. And that would leave you with apples. So 2,000 divided by 40 
the zeros cancel, and 200 divided by 40 is what, 50? So 50 apples, or 50, you get 50 crates, I'm sorry, 50 crates. Huh. Apples cancel too, but I don't know why I'm not getting the crates to cancel. Let's see how they set it up. The apples, I guess I don't put crates right here. If I don't put crates right here, that leaves crates. So 50 crates. And these are not the kind of unit conversions I'm usually doing. I'm usually turning milliliters into something else. And so we'll hopefully get to those before it's over with, because I'm not going to ask you about crates. All right. I'm going to ask you about volume and area. So, okay, there it is right there. 2,000 apples divided by 40. And you see that the apples cancel, and that's what I did. And that leaves one crate. There we go. All right. Not That's not a test question. Now, that first one might have been a test question, but that ain't no test question. I'm not going to ask you about crates of apples. Um, let's go with the next question. A conversion factor. Okay, now these, I'm going to go ahead and tell you this right now. You might have one in your book, but I'm going to go to Google, and I want you to find a good conversion factor. Now, it would be good if you could get the one out of your book, okay? And just say unit conversion sheet. And hit... Images and just pick one. Here's a good one. I mean, if you can print that on a big sheet of paper, that's a good one right there. And it gives you all your unit conversions after it clears up. Um, one inch equals 2.54 centimeters, one pound equals 0.454 kilograms. This is what you need for unit conversions. And you need a sheet like this. Now I can't pull up the book, of course, because for some reason my home computer won't pull up the book, your textbook. I would look, if somebody's got a textbook handy, look in your textbook and see if you can find the sheet and it should be in three point or two point A or two B. See if you have a conversion sheet and somebody tell me what page that's on so everybody else will know about it. But, and the reason you need to use the book conversion sheet is because sometimes, like your book may say one centimeter equals 0.3937 inches. Okay, there may be a rounding deficit somewhere in there. Has anybody got a book in front of them? Or anybody? I'm looking. Okay, look for it. And let me know if you find a page with the unit conversions on it. I haven't found one. Okay. Oh, found it. Okay, what page? Uh, 89. Page 89. So everybody write that down. So for it's your homework and your the beginning of 2B. What? It's the beginning of 2B. Okay, 2B. Okay. You need to make a note. To use that or copy it or cut it out or print it and use it on an index card. Now, for a standardized test, I would pull up a sheet like this and have this, if you were working, you know, studying for a standardized test, I would pull up a sheet like this or if you want to, a sheet like that and have that handy so you can, you know, do those unit conversions. All right. So that's how you, that's how you tackle that. All right, now this is what they're getting into. Now, standardized measurements, you already know probably. You know that there's 12 inches in a foot. There's three foot in a yard. There's four quarts in a gallon. There's two pints in a quart. And that kind of stuff, all right? That's the conversion factors. So you know that there's 24 hours in a day. You know there's 3,600 minutes or 3,600 seconds, I think, in a day, or 60 times 60, an hour, 3,600 seconds in an hour. 
okay? Those kind of conversion factors you know by heart, okay? You should. So what about this one? Convert a distance of nine feet into inches. Now, this is the type of question I would ask you on a test. And I don't want you to just say nine times 12. I don't want you to do that. I want you to do, okay, nine feet. Does nine feet have any per to it? No. So what I would do is first thing I would do is I would write nine feet over one. Since nine feet does not have a per with it, I'm going to change nine feet to nine feet over one. Now, how many inches are in a foot? Okay, I want y'all to interact with me. What? 12. There's 12 inches in one foot. Now, why did I put the foot on the bottom? Because I have to cancel diagonally. And there's nothing down here. See, there's nothing down here. So I can't put feet up here. I have to put feet. And that's why that one is so important. So feet and feet cancel, and you're left with inches. And 9 times 12, I have no idea. 8 Right, and one be 108. Yeah. Now that is a basic unit conversion. That is a test question. So as you'll see, that's the type of, I'm going to ask you distance questions. I'm going to ask you those type of questions on a test. Okay. All right. How many seconds are in 94 days? This is a test question. I'm going to have to get my brown or black. I hate writing in red. Let's go with brown. That's all I want. I got to get some markers today. How many seconds are in 94 days? Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put 94 over 1. All right, so somebody tell me what I'm going to do next. Well, go down from days. What's your next day? Of, what's your next measurement of time beside day? Hours. Hours. How many hours in a day? 24. And how do I know to put day there? Because day is on the top. So I got to put day on the bottom so they can cancel. All right. What's the next me measure of time below an hour? Minutes. minutes. So how many minutes are in an hour? 60. 60 minutes in one hour. And the next minute is how many seconds? It's seconds. And there are 60 seconds in a what? Minute. Now let's go through and check to see what cancels. Well, minutes cancel, hours cancel, and days cancel. And you're left with what? Seconds. This is a prime example of unit conversions. You've got to start with something. And the best thing to do with that starting, unless you have something per something. Now, if you have something per something, then you just put it over whatever that something is. But unless you have a per in there, then you just start with that number over one. And then that dictates, well, I got day in the top here, so I got to put day in the bottom. So your answer is 94 times 24 times 3,600 over 1, and that is seconds. And somebody multiply 3,600 times 24 times 94. Give me that number, please. I got 8,121,600. 8, 
Everybody else get that? Well, let's check and see what they got. 8-121-6. 8-121-6. That's what I got. Good job. Y'all were gifted and talented. Now, see, they go about it differently. I I start off with 94 over 1, and then that tells me I got to put days on the bottom, hours on top. Hour up here, hour down here, minutes on top, and down here. It's, like a, it's just like a... A method. It, it method. It's very methodical. You do this now. If there had been 94 days per whatever, then you would have started off with 94 days over whatever that per whatever is. It would go on the bottom. Okay. Okay. This is because this is uh, area. One yard equals three foot. This is a cubic yard. Okay, because it's one yard by one yard. Or I'm sorry. The so square footage, nine square feet. So one yard by one yard is nine square feet. Okay. Uh, you basically know that because of that. You want to carpet a room that measures 12 feet by 15 feet, making an area of 180 square feet. The carpet is usually sold by the square yard. How many square yards of carpet do you need to buy? Well, you can do this two different ways. You can do the 180 square feet and divide by 9, or you can divide 12 by 3 and 15 by 3 and get that square footage. What's 12 divided by 3? 4. And what's 15 divided by 3? 5. What's 5 times 4? 20. So you can do it two different ways. Okay? And that's pretty much it. Okay? So I want you to write down this one. And I want you to write two different ways to solve this problem. Because we're talking about cubic yards. Now... Or square yards, I'm sorry. Cubic yards is what dirt and concrete is measured in. All right? So here I'm going to go ahead and put, pull up my handy-dandy. Pull this down. Because this is kind of a test question and a standardized test question. So you've got a room that's 12 feet by 15 feet. So 12 feet by 15 feet. 12 feet by 15 feet. And they go ahead and tell you that's 180 square feet. And everybody says, yes, I understand that. Well, if you wanted it in square yards, there's two ways to do it. One is, you know that there is 9 square feet in one square yard. And that was the previous slide. Okay, so if that's true, since I have 180 square feet, I just have to divide that by nine, and then I would get yards. So that's one way to do it. 180 square feet divided by nine square feet, and the feet cancel, and you're left with yards because you're dividing by 9. And 180 over 9 is 20. 20 square yards. Another way to do it is to take 12 divided by 3 multiplied by 5 divided by 3 because there's 3 feet in a yard in a 3 feet in a yard. And this is in feet so you're getting the feet to cancel out. Three feet in a yard, three feet per yard, and this is feet, so the feet's cancel, and you're left with yards. So 12 divided by 3 is 4. 15 divided by 3 is 5, and these are yards. And that's equal to 20 square yards. 
because you're multiplying length times width. And I can't y b. So I really don't care how you do it. When you're dealing with concrete people, sometimes you'll see you'll 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 see a guy measuring and he'll do this and he'll do that, and then he'll say, "Well, just divide it by nine. That's why, because when when you're dealing with concrete and dirt, that nine right there is what they deal with. They divide everything by nine. So that's something you need to write down for your real world applications. But that question right there is a standardized test question. So make sure you uh, you know how to do one like this. How many cubic yards of soil, I'm sorry, S-O-I-L, are needed to fill a planter that is 20 feet long by 30 feet long? I'm sorry, by 3 feet wide. So what's 20 divided by 3? Okay, 20 divided by 3 is going to be an odd number. And then 3 divided by 3 is 1. And then 4 divided by 3 is 1 and 1 third. So you can do it that way, or you can take everything, okay, that 240 feet, and you can divide, since you've got, three, what's 3 times 3 times 3? Three, 3 times 3 times 3 is 27, so you can divide it by that. Now, I'm not going to answer you this type of question on the test, but in this case, that's cubed, and that's cubed right there, all right? The volume, because you're dealing with volume here. Okay, you're dealing with volume. So, you can do it that way. That's about the easiest way to do it. You know that 20 by 3 by 4 is 240 cubic feet. You know that 1 yard equals 3 feet. So, 1 cubic yard, 1 yard cubed is equal to 3 feet cubed, which is 27 feet. And then you just take 240 divided by 27, and that's 8.9 cubic yards. So you need to write that down. So when you're dealing with when you're dealing with uh, cubic feet, you divide by 27. Where you deal with square feet, you divide by nine. So volume and area. So when you're doing volume, like, I'm sorry, I said dirt a while ago, 9 is 27. You're going to divide by 27. So whatever your, whatever your cubic or your cubic feet is, 240 cubic feet, you're going to divide that by 27. Whatever your square footage is, I think we said that was 180, 180 square feet. And 240 cubic feet, you're going to divide by a different number. If you're dealing with volume, then you're dealing with a, you know, filling in a swimming pool or filling in a, in this case, you're doing a planter, whatever a planter is. Is that a garden or what? Sounds like a garden to me. 20 foot long by 3 foot wide by 4 feet tall. Dang, 4 feet tall, that's a dag up bend. Well, anyway, you take that square footage and you divide by 27. If we were just doing the previous question, 180 feet, you divide that by 9. So you need to remember 27 and 9. These are not unit conversions per se. They're more of area and volume conversions. Priority one message coming in on security. Now, channel. I'm not going to test you on this, but you might want to write it down. Um, I'm not going to test you on this. If I do test you on it, it's by accident. Okay? Uh, British pound, dollars per foreign, foreign per dollar. Okay? And I really don't even know what it's talking about. It says 
Converting between currencies is a unit conversion in which the conversion factors are known and exchange rates. Now I'm going to show you the, the, the next example because I think it is good for you and me both to see which way is which. But there is the British pound, the Canadian dollar, the European euro, the Japanese yen, and the Mexican peso. Is it okay to say Mexican and Japanese and European? I thought that it was bad to say Chinese. It was racist, man. Uh, we're all racist. I'm a terrorist. All right. I'm also a racist and a terrorist. Okay. So I guess it's okay to say Canadian, or is it okay to say British? I don't know. Y'all need to figure that out. All right, so write that down. Are you sad Bernie dropped out? Oh, yeah, Bernie's, Bernie's not going to take care of everybody. But I tell you what, girls, oh, Creepy Joe, he's going to take care of y'all. <laughs> piece of candy. Yep, oh, Creepy Joe's going to take care of all them females. British pound, Canadian dollar, European euro, Japanese yen, Mexican peso. Yeah, those Democrats, they're wanting that mail-in voting. That way they can really cheat. They're going to have the they're going to have the dead vote, the dumbass vote, and the uh, and the mail-in vote. But no voter ID. We can't <clears throat> can't have voter ID. You know why they don't want voter ID, don't you? Because then they can't cheat. Mail-in voting. That's about crazy. We've got mail-in voting now. It's called absentee voting. you got to have a witness. you got to have a notary public. We have that now. Oh, you got to have witnesses. They don't like that. Just like they don't there's, like voter ID. Oh, I don't get ain't it. There's, well, ain't there a state that still does mail uh, voting? I think it's like Oregon. I think, isn't there a state that still does um, mail-in voting? Like Most they, states, uh, they do absentee voting. <clears throat> like when I was in the desert, when I was over in Saudi Arabia, I did an absentee vote. And I had to have my commanding officer, I had to have two commanding officers, two officers be a witness to watch me, not, not watch me vote, but take my, open my, envelope, take out the ballot, fill out the ballot in a little, you know, in a little area, you know, they wouldn't see how I voted. And then I would take the ballot, folded it up, and I put it in the envelope, and I sealed it. And then they took it and put it in the mail. Or went to a mail call. That, that, that's how it goes. And they have to sign, sign the back of it. They have to put their name, and then they have to sign it. And if you were in the civilized world, you would get a witness to sign it in a notary republic or something to that effect. Or you could go into the actual, some people vote early. You can go into the actual office of the voting commission and you can actually vote before. So gotcha. there's ways to do it. But the mail-in vote, you talking about a cluster. I mean, the Democrats couldn't even figure out who won in Iowa. And they're going to try to do a, oh, no. No. They'll have everybody from Mickey Mouse to Donald Duck mail in votes. All right, let's move on. I'm going to shut up after this. Uh, okay, here's an example, and I want you to write it down, but I don't want you to write it down because it's a test question. I want you to write it down because you may need it later, or you may see a standardized test question. A gas station in Canada sells gasoline for CAD, Canadian dollars. A dollar thirty-four per liter. What is the price in dollars per gallon? Use the currency exchange rate on the previous slide. Well, let's go back. So, Canadian dollar one point zero zero five and point nine nine five. So write those two numbers down because I really don't know how they're going to do it. We use a chain of conversion to convert from CAD to dollars and then from liters, they use the first one, the dollar five. 
So the currency conversion is 1.005 per CAD. So that would be 1.005 over 1 CAD. And there are 3.785 liters per gallon. There it is. So 1.34 CAD over 1 liter times 1.005 over 1 CAD. So therefore the, the CADs cancel. Okay, and then the only thing, the leaders cancel. And then they got that from the unit conversions, 3.785 liters to a gallon. And then you just multiply it out. So that equals $5 a gallon. Gotta love that socialism up in Canada, don't you? You gotta get the money from what? Somewhere. If the taxpayers don't pay it, you got to get the money from somewhere. So what's the next thing they hit? Energy. That's why California has $5 a gallon gas. Or $4. Got to pay for people that don't work. No, don't work. I'd say won't work. There's a lot of people that just don't want to work. So that's the answer. All right, we're going to stop right there. I have no idea how many more slides we got in this section. We went over about three test questions today. That's the last one. Good. Okay, so we went over three test questions. We went over, no, uh, not that one. I might put that one on the test. Uh, that was the uh, carpet. And that one for sure. I, that one... That's the kind I like to put on a test, but the seconds in 94 days. And convert nine into inches, I would put that on test. So it looks like we went over about three questions today, three, um, three test questions. And I can tell you right now, I think there's only like 10 math questions on this unit four test. Because it's like 20 questions and I give you all 13 bonus questions. So it's 26. So I think there's like 10 questions on the test. So it's not like a lot of questions. All right, y'all got questions? All right, y'all can work on, uh, what is this, uh, 2A. Y'all can work on 2A homework now. And I will shut off the recorder.